in the previous video, in that one, we built compositions that encapsulate managed PostgreSQL databases in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Those enabled us to provide a simple service that allows anyone to create a database and everything, everything required for it to run successfully, while at the same time converting the complexity into an implementation detail. However, we still have a distribution problem though. We would need to instruct people managing the control plane to apply providers, composite resource definitions and compositions. We would need to distribute all those manifests we wrote. Well, that is not necessarily a bad idea, especially if you're using GitOps tools like Cargo CD or Flux, there might be a better way to distribute all of that. We can build OCI or what you might call Docker images that package everything Crossplay needs to run a set of compositions. We call those configuration packages, which just like providers, and as you will discover later, functions are all variations of crossplane packages. Those are the ones that we saw when we were retrieving package revisions with the kubectl get pkg rev command. Hence, this video is dedicated to crossplane configuration packages, which provide a mechanism to distribute configuration resource definitions, compositions, and providers they depend on. Let's start by setting up everything we will need for the hands-on part of this video. You already know what to do, at least if you watched previous videos in this series. We will enter the directory with the crossplane tutorial fork, unless you're already there, run nix shell, make the setup script executable, and run it. The only thing left is to source the environment variables. As you already know, all the commands are in a gist, and gist is in the description, so check it out. And now we can move into the real deal. We can start building configuration packages. I have a feeling that you might think that I'm trying to trick you by hiding something. So let's start by showing that there is almost nothing in the control plane cluster we are currently using. Are there any compositions? Well, nope. The output says no resources found. How about packages? It's still no resources found. I will leave it to you to discover that there is indeed nothing in the cluster except crossplane itself and the secret with the credentials for whichever hyperscaler you chose. Unlike in the previous videos, we did not apply packages, compositions, composite resource definitions, or any other type of resources we use so far. I wanted to ensure that we can package all of those into a container image and apply it to a virgin control plane. Actually, that's not really true, but we'll get to the exceptions later. Now, let's take a look at the directory that contains a new version of the compositions by entering into the directory and listing everything inside. The whole directory is a copy of the last one we used in the previous video. I did not modify compositions or the composite resource definitions. Those are exactly the same, but there is a new file over there. A configuration was added to the crossplane YAML file. That's the new addition to the mix. So let's take a look at it. That configuration is a Kubernetes resource like anything else related to Crossplane. It contains a few informative annotations just in case we publish the configuration to a bound marketplace. The real action is in the spec section. Over there, we are specifying that the minimum Crossplane version is 1.14. That one is important if you use features in compositions that were added to a specific Crossplane version. We'll see one of those that became available in Crossplane 114 in one of the upcoming videos. Finally, there is the depends on array with a list of providers and their versions. Since our compositions use AWS EC2 and RDS, Azure DB4 PostgreSQL, Google Cloud SQL and SQL providers, those are the ones we specified here. As you will see soon, all of those providers will be installed automatically when we apply the configuration. We also use the Kubernetes provider, but that one is commented in the configuration. If you remember from the previous video, the Kubernetes provider needs extra resources like service account, cluster role binding, and controller config. Also, the Kubernetes provider needs to be modified to use the controller config. Otherwise, if you do not apply all those, the Kubernetes provider would not have permissions to create resources through the Kubernetes API, just as AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud providers need configurations with authentication. Unfortunately, those cannot be put into the configuration package. 
I should have removed it from the configuration, but I thought to leave it there commented as a reminder that it needs to be applied separately. Now that we have seen the configuration, we can build a configuration package that will contain that configuration together with all compositions and composite resource definitions from that directory. All we have to do is execute cross twin xpkg build and take another look at the files in that directory. We can see that .sql xpkg file was added. That's the file that will push to a container image registry. That's the OCI image that contains a configuration package with almost everything needed to run composite resources and composite resource claims. Next, we will push that package to a container image registry. It could be Docker Hub, GitHub registry, Harbor, or whatever you might be using to store your container images. But to keep it simple and the same for all following this tutorial, we will use Upbound Registry. It's free and it is the home to most, if not all, public configuration packages, providers and most of the other resources we are or will be using in this series of videos later. First, we need to create an Upbound account. So please open accounts.upbound.io and create an account if you do not have it already. Since I prefer a terminal or a console in a browser, at least when there are some actions to be performed, we'll do the rest of the steps through the app CLI, even though we could perform some of them through the graphical user interface as well. So let's log in and create a new repository. For those who do prefer pretty colors, we can see the newly created repository by opening the marketplace in a browser. From there on, open the user in the top right corner of the screen and choose which account you would like to manage. If you just registered, you will have only one. We can see the newly created repository. If we enter into it, we get the depressing image that there are no packages inside it. We'll change that soon, very soon. We are done with the marketplace repository. Now we can turn our attention towards pushing the package we built earlier. But before we do that, we need to authenticate Crossman CLI with the repository we just created. First, we'll store the username in the app user variable and login. Now we are ready to push the package. And that's it. The configuration package was pushed and now it is available to anyone who has permissions to use it, which in this case is anyone since we created a public repository. We can refresh the repository in the browser to confirm that the package is there. Apart from the fact that configuration package is now stored in the upbound marketplace registry, it could be any other container image registry. We can also see that it is not yet published. That means that the package is not listed in the marketplace. We'll keep it like that, mainly to avoid hundreds of .sql packages appearing in the marketplace. After all, this is a tutorial and not a real package that you would like to share with the world. The instructions are straightforward and I will assume that if you do decide to share your creations, you will have no trouble following them. Finally, we will delete the package since we do not need it anymore on our local file system and we'll get back to the root of the directory with the form. Here's what we did. We took our compositions, composite resource definition and configuration and packaged it all into an OCI image. We pushed that image to the container image registry and now it is available to be deployed to any cluster that contains crossplane. And now we are ready to explore how we and others can consume the configuration package we just built and stored in the registry. Let's get back to our unexciting cluster, the one that only has crossplane installed, the one without packages, compositions, composite resource definitions, or any other type of resources we explored in previous videos. Let's transform that uninspiring, empty cluster into a control plane that can manage the PostgreSQL database in hyperscalers. We should be able to manage anything else, but PostgreSQL should be a good start. Everything we need is probably in this configuration. That's all there is to it, probably. It's a configuration that references a package we just built and pushed to the registry. Actually, that's not the one you pushed to the registry, so let's tweak it a bit by replacing vparsic with uh, whichever user you used. Now we can apply it and now is the time to take a break for a few minutes since, as you already know, it takes a while until all the packages are deployed and all the CRDs are created. Go pause this video, go get some coffee if you're following along. Once you're back, and I hope you're back, we can take a look at the package revisions. We can see 
two types of packages. At the top, there is the configuration. That's the cross-plane SQL configuration we just applied. Below are all the providers we specified in the cross-plane YAML file. Two things are missing, though. The Kubernetes provider is not there. We already established that one is complicated and that we'll have to apply it outside the configuration package. Provider configs, those that contain credentials for hyperscalers, are also missing. We'll get them in a moment. For now, Let's confirm that the compositions are there as well. All three compositions we defined in the previous video are available and we can get back to the things we are missing. It would be unreasonable to add provider configs into configuration packages. They contain credentials or, to be more precise, references to secrets with credentials for, in this case, operating hyperscalers. We would not get far if we would add those to container images. So we need to apply them separately, just as we did before. Here's the one we used in previous videos. You already saw provider config manifests, including that one in previous videos. So I will not repeat uh, what they do and how they work. The only note I have is that in this video, I'm using AWS. So the config reference is a secret with AWS credentials. You'll see in your terminal, the config that matches whichever hyperscaler you chose. And that's it. Let's apply it. Finally, the last piece of the puzzle is the unfortunate Kubernetes provider, which requires extra care. We discussed it in the previous video, so let's just apply. Here's what we did. We applied configuration, which downloaded the image, which Crossplane used to install the providers, compositions, and composite resource definitions. The only thing missing was to apply provider configs with credentials those providers can use to authenticate with APIs like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Now we're done. From now on, anyone, anyone can apply composite claims. Everything we did in this video is related to how we manage compositions, composite resource definitions and providers. Managing composite claims, which manage composite resources, which manage managed resources, stays the same. As proof that that's really the case, we can just apply the same claim manifest we used in the previous video without even explaining it or showing it since you already know what it looks like and what it does. To confirm that everything works as expected, we can execute crossplane trace. The claim created the composite resource, which created managed resources. Everything works as expected, or to be more precise, everything will be available eventually. You can wait until all the resources are available or move on. You already saw the end result. We just changed the path how to get to it. From now on, you can keep updating compositions. And once a new release is ready, build a new version of the composition, uh, package it, and push it to the registry. As a result, whichever changes you made to compositions or to dependencies like providers will be applied whenever you apply the new configuration to your control plane cluster or clusters. There are still some things missing, though. We shouldn't release new configuration packages without testing them, and we should automate the process of testing, building, and pushing packages through pipelines, or what you might call CI. We'll get to that in one of the upcoming videos. For now, we are finished. So let's destroy everything. You know the drill. Make the destroy script executable, run the script, exit Nix shell, and take a break. You deserve it. We are done with this video, but not with the series. Next one is coming, or depending on when you're watching this, is already available. If it's already live, you should see it somewhere around uh, there, above my head. Otherwise, please wait for a while until I upload it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.